<laughs> Welcome, recruits. I'm Greg, and with me as always is my close friend and leader of the NorCal Ghostbusters, Chris Nance. Hey, Greg. Chris, good day to be a Ghostbuster today. Really good day. It, 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 yeah, yeah. For those of you who don't know, uh, the new trailer, extended trailer, which came out rather late. The movie comes out in less than two months, and it's we only got one, two trailers, a teaser one and this one. This is a longer one, and there were multiple editions of this trailer. There was an international version, and then there was an American version, and oh boy, so much content. So today, Chris and I are going to walk through the trailer. We're not going to give you a reaction video because those are lazy and uncreative. We're going to give you a breakdown of everything we mm -hmm. saw. And our theories we have, and I have a ton of theories that I'm probably sure they're right. So we're going to go ahead and say this is a spoiler warning. If you don't want to know anything about the movie, it says the right trailer breakdown. If you don't want anything about the movie, some people yeah. are like that. They don't want to see any trailers, right? So this that's your warning. The title is your warning. With that, uh, let's continue. I'm going to start with the um, American trailer, Chris. Yeah. Let's get to work. Here we go. All right. So this is obviously this is the opening to the film, right? They're in New York. They're in the Ecto. They're doing stuff yep. in New York. Yep. I've been waiting 40 years for this. And then, oh, yeah, we have Callie Coon, Carrie Coon, and all the, the Spanglers and Gruberson. I'm glad mm -hmm. podcast, because, like, how do you fit podcast and 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 uh, Lucky in there? I don't think you do. Even, even, even having Phoebe along for the ride is a little bit, you know, sketchy with the ages going on there, well, too. Like... So I thought about that too, but guess what, Chris? It's summer. There's no school. That That's how they get around that bullshit. They're like, yep, it's summer. Summertime. It's July. They're, they're, out, they're out of school, right? They called themselves Ghostbusters. Of course. According Walter to Peck. these hacks, they saved the world. Mm -hmm. No eyewitnesses. Walter Peck is making a return. And he's a judge. And who is found he's to judge. carry the torch? Did we get confirmation on him being a judge? He got he's, he's a judge. Because he said that's what they, that's what makes the like uh, you know uh, overworld like thing. Because why would he make that joke unless he was mm -hmm. something had to do with the courts, right? So he's some type of a judge. Yeah, uh, I I had a suspicion based on like like the background of the shot that we see of him there, like mm -hmm. uh, that that looks like a judge's chambers, like it looks like a court mm -hmm. bailiff hanging out by the door behind them, like like in classic fashion, they get in trouble, right, doing the things that they do. Because it is yep. dangerous. And that's why it says, like, it's not dangerous. It kind of is dangerous. <laughs> um, one thing that I did notice, Chris, I don't know if you noticed here, and it's it's kind of hard because I'm controlling the trailer on Chris's side, so it's a little bit of a delay. But mm -hmm. I can tell him the time codes. Where did he go? At... Where did he go? Did I miss it? Uh, minor, hanging out the side. Descendants. Egon right here, Descendants. So that was at, at 23 seconds. Look at the left side of the magazine. Look at that magazine right the left of the frame at 23 oh, seconds. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the uh, the Ghostbusters 2 logo there. There's a, a box of old promotional material. So this is presumably up in the in the uh, firehouse attic. I'm so thrilled because I, Jason had said that it, like, it was canon, right? But it was not really talked about at all in Afterlife, which it can be like... Makes sense, right? It's not the star of the show, but I wanted to know if that happened. Now, obviously, where mm -hmm. the hell is Ecto One A? Like, but this confirms that two did happen because there are people. There was like rumors of them retconning two and like having it not be canon, but it is canon, so that makes me very happy. Yeah. And also, and Chris, we'll get a better shot of this trap later at twenty three seconds. But is that a different foot pedal? It looks like a modified foot pedal on the trap. Uh, kind. Of. You know what? It's hard to tell with my overlay in the way what is it 23 seconds you say 23 seconds there's another uh there's another scene where, you ha where he's holding it but it does not look like your your trap pedal it looks like they uh, may have modified it a little bit so it's important to note and we have seen already that uh they have the afterlife style uh trap pedals which are somewhat similar but they've uh I don't have it here with me, but they've moved the ITT relay, which is that big clear block thing on one side that sticks up from the top of the pedal. Uh, that got moved to the side, so it it's you know ho ho like faced horizontally and no longer like sticking way up and out, and is like a little bit more ergonomically designed, basically. And then the foot pedal itself has like a funky double hinge thing going on. Um, 
That said, uh, give me this a trailer. I hastily, was, uh, I hastily put together an overlay. Hey, Sleepo, what's up? Yeah, I hastily put together this overlay because I lost my computer wipe at the beginning of this month, so I had to didn't lose any files, but had lost all my preferences. Yeah, the foot pedal. All right, that was different. It looks different. So it's just it's just the Frozen Empire foot pedal, basically. But it's hard to see. It definitely looks different, but I can't tell what it looks like. Or was that Econ twenty-three seven. seconds? There's another shot of it later down we'll go back to that's much better. You have a miner hanging out the side of a moving vehicle, firing a laser gun indiscriminately. It has a proton pack. It's completely safe. I wouldn't say completely safe. The Ghostbusters are finished. Right. Well, overruled. And sustained. Thank you. We have, York, out by and we have raised the call. Angel things. Correct on both counts. Buddy, you just hit the jackpot. So this is the first time we see the orb, the mystical, magical orb. What is it? Yeah, the, is. the golden orb. God, we're going to have a hate. So I'm going to stop it here at 53 seconds. But this is the paranormal research department, right? Is that what it's uh, called? Research center. Research center. We don't know yeah. where the location is, whether it's close to the firehouse or in, maybe underneath the firehouse. But we're going to have a heyday just... What, looking everywhere in the background for some weird little things because <laughs> there was so much stuff packed in that in this frame just a little so i don't think, i don't Next. think it's in uh the firehouse specifically uh because we've are we actually also see shots of the uh the original containment unit mm -hmm. in the firehouse basement so we know that the basement is still more or less intact and like I love like this whole basement screams RGB basement, especially yeah. with, like they have they have some type of containment unit. We don't know. It may not be the main one, but there's some type of unit in this there's, facility there. So, Greg, I am seeing in this shot one, two, three, four, five different containment units with with specifically with security doors built over them. So that's that's another shot that's going to come up here as well. Is like we actually get a shot of uh, 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 James Acaster uh, uh, carrying a smoke a trap towards a containment unit yeah. with the door with a big open door in front of it. Yeah, yeah. And so I think what it is like this is you know uh, Winston you know saying oh no 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 we had a problem with this before we're we're keep we're putting in some major security measures so you. You have to, we, you can only be us to open one of these. What's inside of it? Okay, this is a shot that I absolutely hate because it gives away so much of the film. So, Chris, this is a shot of the new character. I forget what his name is. You said his name earlier. Mm. Uh, well, I, I know the actor. It's uh, uh, Pinfield. Um I can't remember his first name off the top of my head. Uh, this is a new character that we're introduced to who's yeah. probably the head of the engineering department, right? The one mm -hmm. make, making improvements to all the equipment. And in this scene, now, this is a theory, but I'm pretty sure safe. This is where he gets possessed by the de by the entity. He grabs the thing, he freezes his hand, he goes off frame, and he gets the deity enters him. Because there's one thing that I've realized that's consistent, and I appreciate the consistency with powerful deities, is they usually need a host or an anchor. Right, so like Vigo needed a host, right? Um, Gozer needed an anchor, needed the two dogs, right? And then in the show, obviously there was a lot of possession happening. So I think he's gonna get possessed. I think he, I think the he we he gets possessed by the main entity in the film, and they're fighting him maybe halfway through the film. Like it actually possesses him and turns him into the the, I, the creature. I actually kind of wonder if he possibly gets if that is the direction that they go it could also be sort of a a, a janosh uh uh terror dog kind of situation where he's, oh, you think he's it'll be like a helper of, and like be uh, all weird and be funny uh, yeah or possessed by like the heart like like this you know uh garaka's harbinger or something right. like because the whole the whole film the whole trailer basically feels like a combination of slimer come home and when Halloween was forever, mm -hmm. right? An ancient spirit coming back, riling up all the spirits and making, you know, making them do what they want, which is the both of those, those episodes did, which was kind of cool. So he gets his hand frozen. I'm uh, sorry. Yes. Super says Garfield is his name. I think we get some exposition no, from, from Ray. 
Imagine his name is Pinfield. He's actually oh, was trolling you. <laughs> oh, Garfield. Garfield thinks. I don't know. Commanding army of ghosts. Okay, so here's the here's another part too. He we see we see um I'm at 105, Chris. Yeah. Uh, you see the what's the guy's name? I forget what this. I, I'm terrible Garaka. with names. Garaka reaching for its horns, right? Yeah. So late, early in the game, we have the orb, and then we see Garaka without horns. So the, I think the, the structure of the movie is going to be the orb opens, he escapes or possesses Pinfield, gets his horns, and then has to empty the containment unit in order to complete his ritual or get to full power. So I think that's the, the kind of ABC of where, what it has to do in order to get stronger. Thoughts? I... Uh i don't know man i think that this is very clearly the the golden room from kumail nanjiani's mm -hmm. apartment that we've gotten glimpses of before so Demanding our uh approach. i think this is actually the last time that garaka started to appear well, we've flashback. already had like yeah no, no no i don't think that's a flashback sequence i think that's uh uh kind of touches back to the flashback sequence and the and the backstory of garaka <clears throat> where the last time garaka appeared so we got it in the nar narration from the first teaser mm -hmm. it was That's ray true. saying you know people with the death chill and then we have pat nozzle saying like in july people froze to death but yeah. The cool thing that like and that's that is something out of like that's something I love out of the real Ghostbusters is like this mystical object that, you know, he was defeated it was defeated God knows how long ago using spells and magic, but the Ghostbusters always use science instead. Mm -hmm. Which is real which is a fun dynamic to play with in this universe. Alright, let's go forward here. He puts his horns on, it puts its horns on. Here's the flashback sequence because you were talking about one oh nine. This is obviously like eighteen something civil mm -hmm. war type of 18 the 18th century where you see a firefighter and like they're I, in this banquet room in new york probably and all these people are frozen to death i think if we get some kind of explanation to how garaka was put back into a box or put mm -hmm. into that orb last time and like some of the backstory of like oh who is this person who managed to do this how did they do it they took garaka's horns as a trophy and then or as a warding object, maybe like. I I think, and that brings either I mean brings me even more RBG vibes with that. Uh, what was that demon? Peter Venkman's father, the demon that he released in the cartoon show. I forget what that episode was, but if people are watching, they might be able to help me on that one. But yeah, I've they they they, they really he released a demon in black ice, right? Like it's always a shaman or a mystic or some kind of. Yeah. Uh, wizard that does something in the Ghostbusters have to go, well, we can't do that. We don't have that spells. We'll have to use science to solve the problem, which is great. Algarot. Yeah. Ha yeah. Haba Garrick or whatever. Yeah. That was the <laughs> great. My fear itself. Like literally scared to death. Yep. Okay. Chris, I'm at 116. Is that, that's not Dana Bayer's apartment, right? That's no. not the same. Okay, I thought it was the building. Cause yeah. I'm like, oh, they put something on top of it to like maybe measure PKE, but no. Okay, it's just a building. It's a building that's like right around the corner from the firehouse. Okay. We, we see more of the ice stuff happening. Ice age. Dan Aykroyd says the ice age is coming. We need all the help we can get. Let's get to work. So they need more people to help. Oh, beautiful stop. The positive on 125. We get that beautiful black van. Mm -hmm. We finally get. Yeah. Cause you know, there's more, there's more equipment now, you know, they're going to have the bigger, they need a bigger car. Hey, and we quick get a, question. How much do black sprinter vans cost? Not very much. I mean, you probably get a used uh, POS van for like 2000 bucks, but then painting it would be the pain in the ass. Painting it would be an extra thousand bucks. Oh, nope. Went too fast. God, they went by that shot really quick. Oh, look at that beautiful pack. All right, Chris. Oh, this is your time to shine, baby. I'm at 126. Go for it. I mean, there it's we get a trio of hero packs here. The big, which is not a huge you know, reveal. We've already seen these a fair amount already. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing new that we have to uncover other than like the one up front. I will point out is the Spangler at, is at least supposed to be the Spangler Legacy pack, and you can tell that by the PPD. What's um, the PPD for people out there who don't know what that is? 
So that little cylindrical object right dead center of the pack below the ribbon cable with the red danger sticker on it. This right here? Yep, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that is the PPD, and uh, the one of the tells on the Spangler pack is always, the Spangler superhero pack has always been that it, it has like the most worn paint job. It's supposed to be black. <laughs> yeah, pitch like, black, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, but the other thing, uh, something I will point out that kind of stood out to me too, is, uh, something that w has always been a brass rod in the past. The little, the ion arm rod mm -hmm. is, looks like a copper rod to me now. Oh, you think they replaced it? I think they changed it to copper. I'm interesting. You can see it pretty clearly in this shot, especially with it juxtaposed next to the copper wiring. Like, that is the same color. Yeah, he says, my wallet's suffering too. I was telling Chris yeah. before the show started how I spent like $350 in mods today on my HasLab because I've got the Chris bit me with the bug itch. Now it needs to be perfect yeah. <laughs> or it needs to be different. Yeah. Um, I'll, I will put out like, what, Chris, what is that thing next to the danger, the PPP? The, it looks like there's a ton of wires wrapped around it. Oh, the, the new wire harness block? Yeah, um, that is really funky. Yeah. And it looks like they removed I mean, one of the cylinders as well. One of the cylinders has been removed yeah. from the pack and moved yep. to the right and then wrapped around the wires. Uh, the, the filler tube, yeah, yeah. I was telling you about this the other day, actually. Uh, yeah, the filler tube is taken out completely, or the beamline tube is taken out completely, and then it just plugs into... Uh, like a little 90 degree adapter like next to the clipper now which Damn. that's going to be fun to install <laughs> of course we have the yellow bumper we have all the grounds that, that are mostly yeah. the same except they have we have more grounds going to the back of the pack now they moved one of the tubes that was attached to that to, to one of the uh, the cables that was attached to the filler tube Chris you just mentioned and said you attached it to the where the clip art is on the pack that's been yeah. moved yeah and then uh but so really besides all of these things like like there's all you know these details that are like the new frozen empire style to the packs um you know we could go on about like the back padding like there's padding behind the mm -hmm. alice frames now like on all of these packs uh you know it's like we could go on about that for a second the new detail i pointed it out earlier in discord uh all three of these packs appear to be plugged in with red tubes oh they are they are i didn't even notice that they are all three yeah all three of them have like red tubing plugging it, that they're plugged to are and they it's just being plugged charged? The side of that block did they finally go electrical i don't i don't i don't know i that looks just that looks more like that doesn't look like wire cabling so much like as like like tubing which makes me wonder if like it's like refilling the hydrogen source oh that'd be kind of cool and then and then what's so if you go back to 126 the thorough we see the shroud which we've seen but the shroud there's it looks like there's another piece on it i'm looking at my wand and i don't there's a piece to the right sticking out by the shroud i don't rem not the one where the red the red wires attached to the other side what the hell is that that's the other side of, like the other ear on the gun but it definitely looks way longer huh aces says could be the monitoring well yeah aces says the the red the red tubes could be monitoring the stasis of the booster core that's getting real deep real deep yeah but it definitely looks way longer than than it should be. But I mean, this is kind of a funky angle to look at it from. It is, so. and like, and we're unfortunately, unless like you have, and until so like we get a pack that like someone shows off, like we got a little bit of like some of that, like in some press materials for that VR game, but not a ton, mm -hmm. right? If I would have been to that event, I would have made sure, hey, give me two hours of this prototype pack. I need to take, I need to take a bunch of pictures for Chris and for the Ghostbusters and do 360s and get all the intricate <laughs> stuff going on because. I, you know, most of the stuff we've already seen, you know, the new handle, the thermal charging plate, the wand's kind of cut off. Uh, a new connector for the hose in the back uh, looks a little bit more, like, modern or more, like, clean. 
they still used Egon's whatever kind of tubing that's called the the green tubing. Yeah, the scuba, the scuba hose. But it looks great. The bumper looks great. Uh, the I'm kind of bummed because I think my thermal charging plate's not going to match the bumper that I get, but that's okay. Uh, no, this looks great. This is a great hero shot of the pack. Uh, of course, you see traps underneath it too. Keep playing. Be Bill Murray. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's kind of like they, they have a huge presence in this movie. I wonder if like they enjoyed working with each other in Afterlife. And they're like, yeah, let's, let's be in this movie more. Melnitz in uniform. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're we gonna get, stop we this get, right, right here for Chris again. We get, <laughs> we, we, get Janine, we get Janine in the flight suit. I yeah. actually, I sent you a high def still of that arm mounted, of that shot of the arm mounted wand already. You did. So, and I went down the yes. rabbit hole a little bit today, and people are saying it's just a, it's a, it's a thrower. It's an arm attached thrower. So yes. it's just a, it's just a, it's like a mini proton uh, neutrino wand. That attaches to your thing. Yep. That's what it is. Me, yeah, I, 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 I thought it was going to be a, a, a boson dart thing. I thought that would be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I I suspect it's going to be a thrower, but it's going <laughs> to... We're getting close to the Sparklatron. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> close, so close. <laughs> but uh, uh, I suspect they're going to give it some kind of caveat that like it's somehow limited in its capacity or like like duration or like... Well, also uh, something that that I've noticed in the trailer just in general is I feel that this is just them starting to like retrofit the gear and like upgrade it. So like they're in the middle of doing this and that that plays back to scenes we'll see a little bit later that we'll go through. So I'll keep pressing play here. See, because like here's a proton pack, no muzzle flash. It looks like it's the original, like, I don't know, two one. Like, it's hard to tell, but the ribbon cable looks like it's from two, right? I can't, Chris, can, I'm at 132. Oh help. no, that's a GB1 cable. It's okay. it, so no shroud on that. You know, there's no overhang. Like no, it looks yeah. like a standard pack that you see in GB GB1 or two. Like I don't see anything. I can I can already tell just from like the electrical tape on the uh, injector tube tubing that that's that's a afterlife configuration. Okay. So it's going to have mostly like GB1 details, and then it's you know going to be all dirtied up and stuff, and have all of the the Haslab details that we're used to. Hey Debo, hey IT. Oh wow, everyone is in here. It's awesome. That's right. Thanks guys for for tuning in. All right. So here's here we go. And we get next plas uh, next at 133. We get an exposed cyclotron with the pack on. So my th my yeah. theory here is that like I said before, they're in the middle of retrofitting, upgrading all of the gear, and they need more, and they don't have time to do it either because their tech is possessed or because they just they just didn't finish it in time so now they're haphazardly which is very ghostbustery haphazardly making these work so they can have more proton packs more they can have more than four proton packs or more than five because there's eight people now so they yeah. all need one and i think that's just i don't think that that hints to anything other than like they had to just rush out so everyone could have a pack <laughs> to fight the ghost <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. great to see that like actually moving you know like and and in 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 the in the trailer Sparklatron, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing, I don't, I don't think that's a malfunction. Uh, and somebody even uh, was asking earlier about, like, well, how, how do you operate it with the cover off without the hydrogen escaping? I'm like, well, I, I don't think the hydrogen, tra the hydrogen particle travel path is exposed there. I think what we're seeing is the action of the electromagnetic firing in sequence. Uh, which is visually really fucking cool, and I like that, like, like that visual too. Like, uh, but uh, uh, the important thing to note here too is look at the background. We have the Ecto One to the left. Mm -hmm. If you look to the right, those white pillars sticking out at odd angles sure oh, look yeah, like ice yeah, spikes to me. Definitely, so it's... this is this is after Garaka breaks in the firehouse doors. If you look also past the Ecto-1 on the right, that looks like Callie and Gruberson looking back in shock as someone, theoretically Phoebe, comes out with a hero pack that's not supposed to be working and is all juiced up to do something. I don't know. It's also exciting because this is, I mean, the Ghostbusters have had such a, the one, both one and two have a very structured story, right? And uh, the the story of, like, I'll compare it to, like, 
Star Wars, right? Like Star Wars is a good example where like, you know, you see Darth Vader and he wins the first time, right? New Hope, he kills mm-hmm. Obi-Wan, he wins, right? Then they encounter him again. Uh, I think that this this movie might follow that same kind of modern writing where it's just like they go up against Garaka, lose terribly, and then have to recoup in Act Three and meet him somewhere else. I think that this yeah, is we... the, I think this is the end of Act Two. He gets to the containment unit, beats everybody, gets all the ghosts out, and they have to go to like a stadium or the Statue of Liberty or some like famous place to like finally confront him. Uh, I don't know if it is necessarily Aces. I th- I think they may have modeled it after the. Uh the uh, HasLab pack in terms of details, because if you can catch the frame where the sparkle is actually in the upper left-hand corner of the cyclotron, you see this, like, the same design to the interior, like, the cyclotron interior, like, switch plate that the HasLab has. It has those four little fake LEDs and the two switches for turning, changing modes and turning on and off the, the vibration motor. It has those. I don't think they actually used a Haslab though. Like, I'm not fully convinced. I don't think they did, but I think it, from a story perspective, yeah, but yeah, was- yeah. Well, I think I think in terms of like like prop design, they used it to inform the design of what they were doing more than anything. And then in terms of like the story, I think it's just like you know, Egon had modified his pack. They bring it in, and now the the new tech is upgrading all the packs inspired by Egon's design. Like, obviously, he was going to do something right with the pack and he took borrowed heavily from like there's there's still the ground wires on there there's still a few things that are specific to the spangler's version of the pack unfortunately absolutely unfortunately like i mean i watched afterlife again unfortunately we don't get a real good look at the the original three packs at act three like they're really shrouded in dark and you can't really see if there's been any modifications to them i think they're all like 84 packs i think they're all standard but Mm -hmm. it's really hard to see even on set pictures they're always facing forwards you can't see the pack (laughs) But yeah, I think like Chris said, like the lore wise, Spangler made these modifications. New engineer is going to take inspiration from those modifications and upgrade all the packs or most of the packs. I mean, we did you ever look in the? Uh... Sorry, you inspired me to double check what you were just talking about with, regarding the uh, packs and afterlife. And yeah, you know what? They're actually they're all GB two packs. Yep. So they're all standard <laughs> GB two packs, right? Yeah. Yeah. So no one messed with the packs after two except Egon, which would make sense. Yeah, Egon's is the only one that's like got all the modifications on it. Like that's what's so uh, so upsetting with him with the actor passing is that like Egon was like the brains of the whole thing like Ray's an engineer but like he can't build this stuff without Egon's help you know what I mean he'll make he, you know yeah, Chris, chime in on that you know more of that stuff yeah well no exactly like not entire like he can't do it all entirely alone and then especially like it seems like they're leaning more and more into him being more of the paranormal expert than an engineering expert um and uh, it may even be, you know, less and less canon that, you know, how much help Ray had in actually building the equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, that said, like, uh, uh, I don't, you know, it's it's definitely, I don't know, we're going to have to see, like, because what we've heard of what Ray's doing is, like, is he doesn't really have much to do with the actual R&D side of stuff. So much like he's off doing a thing, you know, manage, you know, holding down his bookstore and then doing a, a thing with podcasts for Instagram Live. <laughs> I also think we're gonna see in this film like a point where, like, it's one of those things where like Ray wants to be involved, and they've talked talked about this in some in in the Empire magazine a little bit. And he's gonna try to do something and put someone in danger because his age. He's just gonna realize mm. that he's not. He can't do this anymore, and that's going to be a very... That's the heartfelt moment, right? Like, the, it's time. I can't do this anymore. I have to pass the torch. I have to officially pass the torch. Going to be a cool moment to see, right? Probably a sad moment, because we all love Uncle Dan. Uncle Dan and Harold were the just... They were the connoisseurs. They were the heart of this franchise. And yeah. uh, seeing that in film of him being too old and putting someone else in danger because he couldn't do something or couldn't figure it out or, fr- or froze, you know what I mean? Uh, that's That's pretty brutal. But cool to see it's all like development. You know, we all get old. We all we all can't be Batman forever. You know, he's gonna he's yeah. gonna get old eventually. What happens then? You know. All right. 
<laughs> oh yeah, the gray lady. We get the gray lady. Oh yes, Eleanor, one of the, uh, yeah. I think one of the first. Uh, no, we can, I, uh, but yeah, no, no, no. The gray lady, absolutely stoked about her practical puppet. You can tell it, it, it's great. It, she looks great. You could you could replicate that aces probably with certain lights. I don't think you should put sandpaper and <laughs> like something that actually causes sparks. <laughs> <laughs> they they probably did for the movie, but I wouldn't do that. Life. I'm sure you could mimic that with like lights, some LED lights. Yeah, and then if, I think she charges. Yep, this is. I think this is the moment. This is the moment I just talked about, where like Ray goes to do something and he's by himself and he gets in trouble and he realizes that he can't do this anymore. Yep. <laughs> and he's wearing like he's wearing the same. You you called you showed this to me, Chris, on Twitter. He's wearing the same jacket from two. Yeah, he's or one uh, from one from yeah. one yeah they're all like wearing the same clothes which is kind of a funny little like nod easter egg detail yeah <laughs> all well, right we see the for... mini puffs make a return right being their little malevolent selves maybe they'll have an actual like purpose there there are already uh ghost heads iding the books on this table and buying them that's amazing this community is so <laughs> rad they're so cool Flying saucers are hostile. <laughs> but there's something strange. Uh, so we have Phoebe and uh, podcast, and I'm not sure where they are. There's, they're, I think they're at the uh, the place where Patton Oswald works or something because there's some kind, they're in kind of some kind of store. It could be Raise a Cult, like in the back or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, th I mean, given the stuff on the table there, I'm I'm willing to bet it's Raise a Cult because you all you, like you also see like the pencil sharpener that the that the one sta uh, mini puffed is playing with is like a like a coffin shaped thing with Ouija board like designs on it like you know I see a stuffed two headed thing in the background there like yeah it could be a basement yeah it could be the basement that's that's a good point strange. All right, we get some close-up shots, some hero shots of the Busters. Oh, we have a new ghost, the new Slimer, right? As people are saying, Pukey, who leaked as oh. a Funko Pop. He looks like a potato. <laughs> looks like a potato with a flap jaw. <laughs> uh, people, people are already <laughs> theorizing that that could be Garaka before he gets like fully released and powered. Oh, that would be made. That would be funny. That would be really funny. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that. That, that would be a fun little twist. What a twist. The phone's been replaced. No more red phone. Was it a red phone? It was a red phone, wasn't it? Uh, in two, maybe. Let me check out. Hold on. We're going we're gonna to confirm this. To the reference library. Desk alarm button. Desk alarm button looks great. I'm just gonna go through here. I could have sworn the phone was red in the first movie. Any Ghostbusters TVG references? What's TVG? Of the video game? Oh, no, I hope so. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. Okay, in GB2, that's the same phone in GB2, but I think in GB1, it's red. So that's the same phone in GB1 and GB2. It's it's not red in one. Oh, why did I think it was red? Maybe because of the cartoon. Maybe. Maybe the cartoon threw me off. What are people going to call? Ghostbusters, what do you want? All right, I love Janine's look. Obviously, that is definitely a throwback to RGB Janine. Like, definitely, mm. definitely with the glass frames. And the red, yeah, hitting her hair red. And, and this is a 89 pack. Because this is, that's Finn Wolfhard. Obviously, he's going to have, like, a side plot of him uh, dealing with Slimer. I think they're going to make that come full circle because they had that entire scene with Rip Miranda's that never made it into the film, I think this is going to be that's in that same Lou and that same feeling of him actually trying to capture ghosts. Cause you didn't get to capture any ghosts in the first movie. 
<laughs> and, well, and then <clears throat> this is kind of that RGB slice of life, like living in the firehouse stuff that they were talking about too, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh yeah, no. If you, if you're living in the Ghostbusters firehouse, you're gonna have to deal with the occasional, you know, in, infesting ghost. And it looks like Slimer's been there since '84, since, and he's just been not just being quiet. Which again, Citizen Ghost, you know, he was just hanging out, doing stuff. Where are the Ghostbusters? Can uh, from the uh, reshot action sequences. Is that what you're talking about, Aces? <laughs> And then, yeah, yeah, the Ray Parker Jr. song is canon in universe. It happened. It happened. Ray they, Parker they, they, Jr. actually yeah. wrote a song about the Ghostbusters. And then uh, this, I'm at 158, Chris. Important scene yeah. here. My theory is this is when, is it, what's the guy's name again? Pinland? Pin, <laughs> Pinfield. Pinfield. When Pinling, Pinfield transforms into Garak, gets possessed. Uh, the thrower is going directly to the sphere that's in the chest. So, and it, the sphere is redirecting the proton stream in two different directions. That's my theory. Thoughts? Hmm. I don't know. I don't see it clear enough to be able to tell. There's definitely something there in his chest. And I think it's the orb and he doesn't, and Garak doesn't have his horns yet. So I think this is like stage two, right? If he, if it is pukey stage two or it's or it's Pinland and he's getting possessed like stage two, and then we have something we the particle beam freezes, which is yeah a huge red flag. <laughs> how how it's, like a, how cold does it have to be and, to freeze a proton stream, Chris? When it I mean pretty fucking cold. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that actually does kind of theoretically work because, like, you, yeah, you, you could leach the momentum from a particle with coal to, like, like that's that is how that works. Uh, the other thing I'll I'll point out, yeah, yeah, Ace is absolute zero. Uh, but uh, the other thing I'll point out too is Lucky is wearing an up updated proton pack mm -hmm. here, so whatever the updates have nothing to do with the threat. Yep, that yep. is just, just too powerful. That's just that's just the new packs. That's harkening back again to the RGB because when they couldn't use their throwers, something would happen, right? Either their their electrical density was off or their throwers wouldn't work or they had to figure out another yeah. way other than just to shoot it. So this is bringing that up. We have a problem. Our throwers don't work. We have to modify them, which leads me to the point where they have those jackets with the LED thing. Obviously, that has something to do with the plot. And people have been saying they don't want Lucky to die. And minor spoiler, she's not going to die because we see her in the firehouse with Garak when he has his horns. Obviously, that happens after this. So she's okay. And it's probably some kind of device or something gets hit and, and unfreezes her. Or they were working on something and they test it on her and it works. So she'll be yeah, fine. Well, so, Greg, actually, I have a theory about the red parkas in that regard. Because all the shots that we see of her after that confrontation where she gets semi-frozen. Mm -hmm. She's wearing a red parka and the and the R and D you know over her R and D uh, flight suit, and uh, there is that little extra device sewn onto the front of the parka that everybody pointed out. And they thought it was you know maybe the updated belt gizmo or something. I don't think it's a belt gizmo. I think that's a anti ghost freeze. Yeah, uh, anti like, freezing like, device. <laughs> like like supernatural <laughs> anti freeze, like. And Which like, again, she's it's awesome just wearing... to see it's, uh, because yeah. you get that in the cartoon yeah. all the time. They would make these little gadgets just to help them for the episode, and then they would be, you know, thrown on the shelf and you never see them again. But to see that yeah. on live action is just is thrilling. More gear is always a good thing. Yes. We've seen that shot already. Okay, people are like losing their minds over the Bill Murray sunglass shot, and I don't get it. Is it harkening back to something? Ghostbusters 2. Oh, that's right, because he turns in the montage and he has his sunglasses on, right? Yeah, he has a very similar... I, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, uh, the sunglasses he's wearing in, in Ghostbusters 2 are not actually Ray-Bans. They look very similar, but they're not. Um, but, like, these are... We actually... I had a discussion with Paul the other night uh, from the uh, San Diego Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. These are... Ray-Ban new Wayfarers, and you can tell by the shape of the frame. Well, now everyone has to get those Heads sunglasses. <laughs> They're $220. Oh, 
of course they are. The dragons were 800. Of course, this is. <laughs> you know, you know, you know what works real well for me. <laughs> so and here we go. We, this is obviously. I mean, my anticipation. This is yeah. the end of Act Two. Uh, Garak is coming to empty the containment unit. <laughs> There's yep. nothing then, you could do about it. <laughs> and then, to your point earlier, we get that glimpse of uh, of Lucky in the in the parka. Yeah, and in the there's Baraka with their horns. So, what's wrong, Sades? You're stuck in here for now. You get a nice little montage, and of course, the most dangerous thing that you could give a Ghostbuster community a flying drone. Oh, I know. Someone's gonna make this. And it's going to be yeah. incredibly dangerous unless they're super smart and engineered. Because <laughs> I don't know a lot about drones, but I do know that like weight, dif like weight distribution is like a huge thing. So you can't just take a spirit trap and like take a drone and then attach things to it and have it be flawless. It would be very dangerous because the spirit trap is not it's not a balanced weight. The, the weight in the spirit trap is very wonky. Hmm. <laughs> Chris, thoughts? Uh, I love the drone trap. Yeah, that's uh, I think a great it was idea. We, like, when we all saw the RTV, like, I think every, just about everybody like, was like, oh, a drone trap would be cool. Uh, the other cool thing that we see, uh, do we see it in this one or the international? I think we see it in the international where, where we actually see it open up. Um, yeah, this but, is definitely uh, opening. Yeah, it opens up on the top. I'll get the international trailer back for this. Oh, um, of course we have. Then we have Slimer um, at 220. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, this has been before. Obviously, they're gonna have like a little interaction where he's gonna keep coming back. Like he finds him, comes back with the trap, comes back with the proton pack, comes back. You know, keeps trying to get him out of his little pile of, of garbage. He kicks it and he gets and he gets slimed. And we. That looks is, like. This is a first. That, too, this is the first time we see something go through a human, I believe, in the live-action series, right? We like actively see it do the pass-through on screen. Yeah, because yeah. we've we've seen the pass-throughs like insinuated through cinema, but we've never seen it like just direct like that. Yep. I don't think that's a first. There's a lot of first here, which is kind of cool. Like, what can we do that people have never seen? I think was a lot of. A lot of the thought process Go Kennan was when he was writing this. What have people not seen in the Ghostbusters movie before? Mm -hmm. And just like, you know, times that, times 50, because there's so many things in this thing that I want to see and get my hands on. Absolutely. And yeah. that's a great eye, Craig. It didn't even really fully, it didn't really fully dawn on me that that's what we see happen here. Like, like I just watched and I was like, yeah, no, well. Yeah, Slimer will go right through you if you let him. You get to see it. Yeah, they're not. I mean, some of them. I mean, some of them can't hurt you, but some of them can. Oh. Um. Hey, everybody. Jason here from Ghostbusters. Sorry about that. I had my thing. Oh, there we go. So this is the international trailer where we get encounters with the unknown. A lot more footage. Uh, we get a Phoebe playing chess in the park, the and then something plays with her. And I don't know if that's a harken to Egon's back. I hope they don't bring back Egon. It was a good send off. I want to move on. Yeah. I want to see new things. Let's not harken back too hard on Afterlife. I'm kind Here. of wondering if it might be more of a nod to like the just the the general ambient ghosts of New York City. Maybe I think it's, she's just, she goes to the park for like for to thought and just think, and then like oh. a ghost plays with her chest and reminds her of her grandfather when in Afterlife. And yeah. yeah. And also, then we have uh, Raisa <laughs> I want to point out in this shot as the lady walks up. There's there are posters on. The, on the uh, window there for uh, live music and uh, tarot readings Fridays at Ray's Occult Books. So, <laughs> yeah, in the, in the natural trailer, he's actually like they're actually he's for some reason he's getting possessed objects. I don't know why. Maybe they're looking for something. I don't know, but it's <laughs> no. It's the the Empire Magazine uh, article actually like mentioned that like he and podcast are doing this like in like instagram live show that is essentially like pawn brokers for supernatural like possessed and supernatural objects oh so this is for the show <laughs> yeah so he's like he's just straight he's i'll bet he's got winston bake rolling him so he's just buying up every every legitimate supernatural object that he can find well that that's like sounds like ray this stuff yeah. is great mm-hmm <laughs> I was there for a mass sea sponge migration, you know? Oh, Ray, the sponge just migrated a foot and a half. 
like so he's so excited about every little thing that's his character but we see some dolls we see a saxophone we see another doll we see some books like weird stuff for your possessed possession mm. and then we no. get the golden orb this is very very the tchotchke very indicative of sam hain right so sam hain was locked in like a like a piece of like a cabinet like kind of like a magic cabinet or like a magic piece of furniture right and then got let out by a couple Boy, ghosts never seen i don't know it's like been so long since i've watched oh. the, that's okay uh, RGB. I, i'm the rgb expert in this one because i love that yeah. show so much so so the question my wife had when she saw this was like do the ghostbusters release him and then it's their fault he's out or is he already coming out anyway you know is it one of those things where they're at fault <laughs> little of column a a little of number two yeah. i like the inter this bit in the international trailer with kumail because he he like he his exchange his lines here are so good that oh, i've never seen it, i've never seen anything like this <laughs> four, years for 40 and then we have it's, uh it's one of a kind six his delivery is so good what's funny is he kind of like he, he gives that that uh he gives that um interpretation that he wants this he wants this gone like he wants to get rid of it he doesn't want to throw it in the trash because he's worried something's gonna happen so he wants to give it to somebody else just so they can deal with it and then ray has his pke obviously checking for valences and something happens something activates the orb if ray touches a button i swear to god what did you do ray <laughs> There's an earthquake and then Ice Age happens. All this is the international trailer, trailer, by the way. We get a nice wide shot of the firehouse. Oh, that will stop there. That's at 32. Nice wide shot of the firehouse. And then we have your 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 scene you were talking about, Chris. 33 seconds. We have Finn Wolfhard and Lucky on the roof of the firehouse. Lucky's wearing the jacket with the belt gizmo, and Finn's wearing a modern pack. That's called modern, I guess. Because it has the power cell door, black and white stripes, and the bumper. I I think Lucky is too. Yeah, she is it's too. Not as, yeah. And she's got the goggles on. Yeah. So she's definitely fought Garak at this point in the film. And they're doing something. They're, do, they're watching. They're, someone's something, doing something in the firehouse and they're guarding the firehouse to make sure that they can let them know when something's coming. Yeah. Which makes me wonder if this is possibly associated okay. with that, like those shots that we've seen of like the the building that you thought was Dana's building. Mm -hmm. getting struck by lightning mm -hmm. like deep freeze pack on the rock. so obviously this is uh i don't know this may be the end of the movie <laughs> mm. uh because you know he's uh he's doing pr spiels for the ghostbusters they've saved the city walter peck's there you know what i mean like Everybody, this could be yeah. yeah and the whole crew is there too yeah like, so this could be the end of the film right there. yeah I don't just, think podcast cheeky. is going to suit up until like the very, very end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think this is the shot from the from the end. We get our new ghost, which we don't know what it's called. Stock ghost. stock footage in New York. Yes. What do you want? All right, we get to, we get a really good look inside the firehouse. In some of these shots, a lot of junk, kind of everywhere. I think those are car batteries to the left. Chris, I'm at 38 seconds on the international trailer. I mean, they almost look like ammo boxes. Maybe it's hard to see. Hard to yeah. We have our we have the lockers, the tool chest. This does change over time because there's different things on the left side in reverse shots later in the film. And we are the only ones. Again, opening the film for sure. Equipped to fight back. Oh, is that the drone? Did it open? Yeah, it opens. That's... Yeah, it opens up. <laughs> it opens on the top. Uh, that's one of those things that, like, why did I think of that? Like, I couldn't even, like, that's such a no-brainer. And you're like, why didn't I think of attaching it to a drone? Right? And then we have probably the most, the best shot in the whole international trailer is just the Paranormal Department Whoa, Research the Center. Paranormal, paranormal Research paranormal Center, research. yeah. Okay, hold on. We have to stop this. There's way too much stuff in here. Chris, go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I see a proton pack. I see cables i see slime i see like there's so much stuff here 
Yeah, you see some of those security door uh, containment units I was pointing out. Next to it is a proton pack, which I'm willing to bet is probably the one that Lucky grabs when she confronts Garaka that first time. Mm -hmm. uh, so many ancient Apple II terminals. I don't know why they have those ancient ass terminals when they've they look cool. Like, they just look cool. That's the thing. They yeah. just look awesome. They just look really retro and, and feel that like that they that blocky, you know, handmade Ghostbusters vibe. Second hand, you know? Yeah. So so uh uh we also have if we look straight down the center there, it looks like not just one observation tank. Uh I see a couple of observation tanks going down that hallway too. Uh which makes me wonder if like we're gonna see like and actually if you look just left of Carrie Coon, you see that guitar? Does it does the scale on it look right that it could be inside the tank behind the glass there? Like oh, I see, yeah, I see it right there. You know, possibly, possibly like like possessed objects or just they just have like hanging around or they have you know put in in the containment tank or like or, or like rocks like you put in an aquarium for like the ghosts to like hide in so they can like you know not be avail you know not be viewed all the time. I yeah I do love this shot though. There's so many. I see. There's even a hard hat in the back. To the oh, center, yeah. to the right from Ghostbusters 2, but that's just a hard hat. It's, you know, like a ton of stuff. This is going to be. Oh, you know what? It's Ray Parker's I... junior guitar. Is he... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm noticing too in that main uh, testing chamber is like you can already see a stream of like slime going, which makes me wonder if like they ha they kind of come in with the slime blower off, off uh, you know, out of sight and then come into sight like with it going. I'm picturing a lot of those. If you ever seen the old James Bond movies, they always had that segment in Q where he would give them all his gear and go over it, and you'd walk through the R and D, and people would be blowing back and like doing weird things. And that's exactly what this reminds me of. But it yep. also just screams real Ghostbusters because they did this. They had a testing department in that firehouse in the show, and they had all the stuff there, and they'd always make wonky things, and Egon would always do weird things and make things really, really cool. Also, oh. aces. Uh, I will point out uh, to the the table to the right there's a chair in like right next to the computer mm -hmm. and if you notice what's hanging off the back of the chair looks an awful lot like a white lab coat mm -hmm. god there's just there's so much i can't wait we're gonna have to yeah i'm gonna have to watch this multiple times who's the guy in the left says troy which one there's there's carrie coon spangler that's winston that's phoebe that's gooberson that's pin i'm gonna get his name right again pinwheel pinfield <laughs> that's pinfield he's like the new engineer the head engineer and this guy's probably just r&d guy r&d guy number seven mm -hmm. <laughs> there's another guy in a in a, in a in a with a hoodie with a hoodie jacket right behind him and they're probably mm -hmm. just doing test stuff and then we and like the next shot is actually really 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 oh, good this is so theory we're gonna see pinwheel Sorry, I'm sorry, Chris. One more time. Pinfield. Pinfield. I'll get the, I'll get it right eventually. We're gonna. They just caught a ghost. Pinfield's gonna put that in observation. Right. They're gonna catch it class three, and then they're gonna put him in observation. I think. I wish everything in the back wasn't out of focus. <laughs> I see another proton back back here. Everything's way too blurry to make out. But you see that nice, beautiful engineering patch you love from Pinfield right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the uh, on the R and D uniform. And then this is we think this is Ray's occult again. There's even more books on the table, and then a bag full of like resistors and old batteries. Yeah, weird stuff. Very electronic very Ray. components that have been stripped out. Yeah. <laughs> you just let ghosts hang out. In Yep, here we go. Yeah, there you you oops, you were right. You were right, Chris. There are more than there's probably three observation chambers. Cause mm -hmm. Finn Wolfhard's looking at one in this shot, Phoebe's looking at one, another one, there's one at the end of the hall as well. Yeah, that looks great. I wonder where it's located. Been 40 years traveling. Now we can I mean it's definitely off site. It looks like it's it almost looks like it's in a like a solarium kind of thing. Like you see the the windows above there? Oh, hey, here, perfect pause here, Greg. What I was talking about, like, you even see Winston kind of holding the, the security door open, and he looks like he's giving them an explainer there. 
as Pinfield is dumping a trap into the into the unit. Yeah, and there's, so, and there's multiple there's oh, multiple place for multiple traps, so you can put four at a time. I don't know why you yeah, need to do four and, at a time, but and the other thing to note too is if you look below Pinfield's arm, there it looks like all of the. So they they didn't uh, put the actual electrical outlets behind uh, <laughs> behind the security door. They're all in front, yeah. Yeah. So this is basically explain all the re- all the the strides they've made in ghost busting over the last six months or whatever since the last since they they saw them. And we have the classic light is green, trap is clean. You know, red and green light set up there above all the units as well it's a potato it's literally it's a possessed potato that's what it is that's what it look at it It has the little spud right it's a potato that's what it is (laughs) why is it a potato that's terrifying all right we've seen that shot they they really love that shot now here's the ball so this is why also I think that Pin, uh, Pinfield's getting possessed because this is the scene where the ball explodes and it's just lucky now to see Pinfield. Now he could have gotten blown back and be on a frame or whatever, but this is what makes oh, me think. That's a, that's a good point, Aces. And I almost wonder if we're seeing the effects of Garaka on Pukey where when he's not being in, like, because we get some hints that Garaka influences other ghosts and like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this I is wonder like if, like, all, the ghosts, if ahead, like all the ghosts, if like all the ghosts, like one of the visual cues we're gonna get for like all the ghosts, like being under the influence of Garakas, that they all get that same bright blue glowing eyes. Remember, like it's always been consistent in all the Ghostbuster Corbus Christmas and the MA series that they're not all spirits are malevolent and they're not all hostile, right? Mm. Slimer had existed in the Cedric Hotel for decades, and like it had never been a problem until. Gozer energy started popping around and started, you know, making them either stronger or more aggressive or whatever. So the same thing is going to go with this. And now, now I'm into it. Before I wasn't. Before I was like, I why does it always have to be a deity coming in to to have the ghosts come up? But like now it makes sense, right? Like the, everything gets picked up by the PKE energy. The ghosts get more wild and more aggressive, more territorial. Okay. Oh, and here we go. We're lucky in the observation chamber. The ghosts not having it. And that is definitely the that's definitely at the firehouse. That's the firehouse containment unit. There might be something yes. in there. It might not be all the ghosts, but maybe there's something in there that Garak wants out specifically. Like a specific spirit. Go Gozer. I don't know. Could what be. if we find out they're like they they're like it. sworn enemies and she, <laughs> you know, like and he just wants to, to destroy her? That would that would be just like straight up uh, uh, ripping off a plot from IDW practically. Dude, I think they pulled from a lot of sources here. I don't think they just you know I think they pulled from the cartoon, from the movies, from the comics, the novelization. Like I really think they went deep. Is something trying to get out? Many things. So who is that in the foreground? I can't tell. Is that Pinfield? I can't tell. They're wearing I some kind of pin- device. It might be headphones. Yeah, I think. I think that's Pinfield. We we see him wearing a similar set of like headphones around his neck in a couple of different shots. We have a glorious shot of Je- now that we know it's Janine holding a what we are already assuming is a is a handheld particle thrower. I mean, we know. <laughs> you can tell from this shot, like that, that was in the IDW not... comic, wasn't it? That was where it made its first appearance. Uh, one of the, I think that was one of the first times. The, the other thing too is like the design on like the hand lever thing that it looks like the actual control, like the shot of her strapping it on. Mm -hmm. You see like the, the control for it is like a little hand lever thing that goes into her palm. Uh, and that is a design that was used in IDW, but that actually is a design that was pulled originally from like the concept art for the very first movie like oh, okay right right come on Sadie sit I know you want out hold on let me come on Sadie come on do you feed oh my wife is upstairs I will feed them in a minute uh yeah and then of course oh the book Troy I'm talking about so they did a the when the first movie came out they did a, no, no, a novelization of the first Ghostbusters film and it kind of expanded on everyone's backstories and their histories and uh it got like 
because the first movie's great, but the focus is primarily uh Venkman, like that he's the main character you follow, but the book elaborates more on Egon and, and Ray and Winston especially, like where they came from and their background and yeah. that kind of stuff. So then I would not be surprised if they pulled stuff from that because it's very well done. Um it was also the first like source for a couple of the, the device names too, because we don't like like they they don't say the name Proton Pack in the in the movie at all. Like no, I, I don't, don't even yeah, know. You're right, they they don't. Even, if, they I don't think they nuclear even, accelerator. Yeah, I don't think they even talk about like the packs like they do in Ghostbusters two because like two they say it, it comes up a couple of times, mm-hmm. but like in one they never say the name. It wasn't like the public name until like the novelization, if I recall correctly. And we have Ray in the the library Ray. again, and we have Ooh. Eleanor Twitty. Mm-hmm. Is that a puppet? It looks great. It, it's got to be a puppet. Yeah. Some, yeah, oh, look, that looks fantastic. You can, you can tell from the way that she moves and the way that Slimer moves. Oh, boy. That looks so good. Army of ghosts. With the power to Army kill. of ghosts taking back to Sam Hain. Him. By fear itself. Like, literally scared to death? That's messed up. So what is the plan? We're the Ghostbusters. Okay, here's another shot of the firehouse. I'm at 131, Chris. They have a, why do they have an ice machine in the I guess it's one of those things. That's a very odd thing to have in the in the middle of the firehouse. A gigantic ice machine. I see a lot of junk. I can't really get anything out. It's a lot of focus. Mm-hmm. Looks like a big industrial size uh, toolbox of some sort right there next to the pole. Oh, it's a stunt. A stunt pack. He just says that's a stunt pack. I would imagine yeah. he's sliding down the thing, and but it may be just a hollow yep. shell of with nothing in it. Uh, yeah, I mean, look at the the rear pipe on the thrower there, Greg. Oh, it's very elongated and like wobbly. No, it's bent. The rear pipe that, on the thrower is that is that how it's supposed to be, or is that the new design? No, that's bent. It's the because it's a rubber stunt pack. Oh, it's okay. That's why. All right. I thought maybe it curved, like you know, like one of the what Count Dooku's lightsaber. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> All right, so they got to get the rubber stump packs and the non-hero packs. All right, we got a really good shot here. With some auto stuff in, to the right. I mean, nothing that's like nothing that gives anything away. Unfortunately, everything's pretty well hidden. It's a good shot, though. Shoot up. Shoot. Every- all right, here's them coming back. This is post this. this is post post Garak escaping and they know there's that and he's coming he's coming to the firehouse for some reason, so they gotta anything that looks terrifying. I'm selling shots the other trailers, the the cyclist park the tron. That orb is prophesizing to bring about the end of I wonder if he'll lose his hand. Kind of a cool character. <laughs> yeah, the storm was in the background, so they're heading back. How trailers work is they give you like the studio gives you the footage you're allowed to use and that's what you have to use they don't get the whole movie they get like they get a, a decent amount of footage but they give them a lot and they only allow to do certain things get away from her! okay this is interesting because like i know for a fact that this shot's in the firehouse and that get this shot her! is at the research center so they cut it together making think that she's saying get away from phoebe but it could be carrie coon it could be anybody <laughs> Not Phoebe, because it's the only two there people. Yeah, is a mystery <laughs> cast member that we still haven't seen. Come on, Rick Moranis. Nope. <laughs> I'll take I'll take Janos. Okay, I'll take Janos. <laughs> no, I mean like there's a new cast member that has not made any appearance in any of the promotional material. And, People and, have been kind of assuming that she's the voice of Garaka or something, but we don't know. So, <laughs> Phoebe's mom? I mean, Phoebe's grandmother, maybe? Eh. Because they were like before Afterlife, the speculation was real, and people were thought that Janine was the grand was was the grandfather, oh, yeah. grandmother. So like, but like, eh, you know, we don't know. We won't know until we see it. Yeah, see, here we have the the updated pack. All the lights look the same there, Chris, to me. I'm at 157 on the international trailer. 
can't I can't I don't see any visual differences in the lights, but maybe you have a better eye than I do. Uh on the thrower? Mm-hmm. Or Egon's girl or Phoebe's grandmother, Carrie Coon's mom. It might not be important. Like that's the that's the thing. I mean, I remember people were giving Jason crap because like we didn't he didn't say he didn't interview and he said like we didn't talk about that because it wasn't important to the story. It doesn't matter who's the mother was, so you know, it didn't matter. The is the rear hat light orange? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yep. Or it could uh, just be color color coming through because orange can bleed uh, red can bleed into orange. Yeah, it's hard to tell if that's a red or an orange. I mean, it's all all of the lighting looks exactly the same as far as I can see from here. There's another lighting effect that we actually can't see on the thrower from this angle. But that, that would just be another colored hat light. Then we have the particle accelerator hit Garak and then bounce off the orb, which I'm assuming is the orb, which is in its chest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because it totally, it's, it, it's, it went to something. It got attracted to something, right? And then it bounced off of it. So, and it's glowing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like something is like protecting Garak, which would make sense because a lot of artifacts could protect ghosts from the proton accelerators. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see anybody on the floor. So if there's someone in there, they got knocked back. And the framing is unfortunately doing its job. The editor did his job and did not <laughs> hit that. Don't worry, she'll be fine, folks. Great shot there. Seen that shot already. Great shot. I'm at 209. Uh, Chris, that's a fantastic shot. You have you have the OG and the passing the torch, right? You have both sides of the, the family, which is fantastic. We uh, have the full crew together. And also, I just noticed, uh, look at Lucky. Yeah, she has the, the, the arm thrower. I she think, has an arm mounted thrower too. I think I think Janine does too. I think they both do. Yeah. yeah. That, and that may that may harken back obviously to the comics, but also maybe to extreme because Kylie had a pistol. A smaller mm -hmm. pistol uh uh for because she was the trapper of the group. But yeah, podcasting uniform. He's only only two people wearing the red coats. Uh for now. We know we we know four of them get them eventually, but only two people wearing the red coats. Podcast is wearing mittens and gloves. Mm-hmm. And they're in the uh they're in the OG uniforms. I, I was kind of hoping to see the two ones. I don't know why. I just think that it's a fun little thing to to have the the gray the gray flight suits with the two logo. They really hate how, the two logo. How cool is it to see the whole like the full new cast properly in the uniforms though too? Like not just like Lucky and Podcast, but also like Gruberson and Callie. Like yeah, I don't know. it man, looks I great. Did, and Dan with the echo I, goggles. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of see like this all about like if you look at it from a symmetrical angle, like you see Dan is in perfect synergy with Gruberson, Carrie Coons in perfect synergy with Janine, Bill Murray's in synergy with Finn Wolfhard, Winston's in synergy with uh uh I can't miss based on her name, Lucky, and then podcast is the odd man out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it's a really good, really, really good shot. Uh nice wide you shot too. Podcast poor podcast like what is i just don't know like i don't hate the character i just don't know what he's doing there i don't he does he have parents do they not care <laughs> like <laughs> no and it's not important to anybody but you i know just what does he bring to the team and we get the same slime shot There we go. Well, that that that's that's basically the breakdown. Chris, is there anything you'd like to add? Any hopes? Any uh, any other wild theories you want to throw out there while we have in a few minutes? Uh, the only hope that I have to throw out there in the last minute is that Sony actually invites us down. I will see. I'm content. I'm, I'm uh, hoping we can actually go there in a cover capacity and do the step and repeat if they do a step and repeat. Uh, entertainment journalism is very finicky and you have to know the right people to get in it it's not like games journalism where like people are happy to like shove a developer in your face and ask questions and give you codes to smaller games like not not a problem but when it comes to like movies 
and getting advice to those it's a little bit more exclusive i think is the word i'm looking for and we don't I mean, we don't really do entertainment journalism i do occasionally but we don't read more mm-hmm. gaming and finance and industry news but hopefully that'll change but yeah uh i think this looks great i i mean the, I, the trailer i think the trailer says a little too much and i can already kind of paste the movie together but that's just the thing trailers do nowadays they you want to see more empire leaked a bunch of stuff the trailer shows a bunch of stuff i'm super excited uh i hope the ghosts that we see in the movie are actual like their own scenes and not just like part of a montage that would be really great if they had their own like little independent scenes um mm-hmm. but yeah i mean other than that like I, I couldn't be more happy with what i saw today and i cannot wait till march 22nd which yeah. is soon th- two months away two months away uh you gonna call him yeah. anyway guys so that was it that was our little breakdown of the trailer uh chris final thoughts excited i'm very excited everything looks great um i think this is exactly like everything that we've seen so far has just been like more of what the fans have actually asked for it's just like get into the lore tell more of a story show more of like the slice of life of living in the firehouse and being a ghostbuster like like just kind of get into more of the nitty gritty and the world of it and everything like don't don't just repeat the same kind of story beats exactly that we've seen before like, let's not lean on nostalgia too hard let's just see new mm-hmm. stuff yeah and that's and that and that'll do it and like uh thanks for watching you guys and if you want to see more of this stuff chris and i do stream occasionally we try once a week to stream yeah. unleashed uh, spirits unleashed uh, and and hang out there it can get difficult being adults and having full-time jobs uh, but we also have a YouTube channel where we put all of our, we're doing like a whole series of how to has lab mods. Chris is, Chris is hosting those and t- making my proton pack look absolutely gorgeous. And we're showing the whole thing. Like we're not just, we, we show the whole process and we, we just filmed two more. We did uh, the lens, the power cell door, how to take the back motherboard off that has lab pack. Cause it's a nightmare. And, uh, and we, we fixed our, um, we fixed our keep alive mod, which is still yep. working. I tested yep. it today. So it's really exciting cool uh and then we have more stuff planned for you for that stuff as well so oh so much definitely motherboard yes. replacement uh where i have i have a, i have a clip art coming that has light lights built into it where that'll be out that'll be a fun one that'll be a soldering one i'm sure or like a mm. or like a wire twisting one or something i don't know i'm not an engineer chris is the engineer i just hold <laughs> the camera and do the editing all right well hey guys thank you so much for uh for watching this i'm gonna put this up on our youtube channel as well after this so until next time keep on busting